Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be going over client to server and server to client communication with the use of remote events and remote functions. Now at first that may sound really confusing if you don't know what they do, uh, but I promise by the end of the video you understand them and they get really easy to do once you've done them a lot. Now another thing I want to address is it's good to learn these now because these are pro uh, remote events and remote functions and things like that. You're going to use them a lot in day-to-day -day developing. So make sure you stick to the end and watch the entire thing to understand how they work. Anyways, let me explain what's going on here in my Explorer because you've probably seen it by now. Uh, I have a, s a script set up in the ser script service. That's going to be my server. And then I have another script set up in a UI and that's going to be my client, a local script. Now, both of these scripts are completely empty, like you see here, because we're going to be doing it from scratch. And I've also set up two elements here. I have a or objects. I have a send button here, a text button, and then I have a text box as my input. And in this example, I'm going to be writing, let's say, a message, and we're going to send that message to the server. With that out of the way, let's get started with the client. So the first thing I'm going to do is actually define our three variables for each thing within our UI. So let's say the UI itself, script our parent, and then we're going to get our button UI.send, and then I'm going to get our input UI.input. Pretty simple. If you don't know um, how to do variables, then I definitely recommend you go watch some sort of beginner tutorial. I even have them on my channel myself. Anyways, with that done, let's actually click the button. So Let's get our send button, which is this here. And send, we're going to use the mouse button one click event, like so. And what this does is when you click the button, it's going to run any code that's inside here, well, inside this function. With that out of the way, let's actually get into communicating with the server. So first thing I'm going to do is create a remote event. Now, there's actually two types you can uh, two ways you can communicate with the server and client and things like that. That can be a remote event and a remote function. I'm going to be going over both in this video, but let's start with a remote event. Now, the things that I've just created, you're most likely always going to keep them in the replicate storage, and it even says it in its name. Uh, replicate storage means both the server and the client can see it. So yeah, it's a good place to put your remotes most of the time. And you'll probably have them in folders as well. But for this example, I'm not going to worry about that. Let's name this remote event send message because that's pretty much what we're going to be doing. And then let's actually define it on our client. So local replicated storage, game, get service, replicate storage. And then we're also going to define the remote itself. So send message equals replicate storage. And we're also going to use wait for child. Wait for child just lets the instance or the object, remote, whatever you want to call it, actually load in. And I highly recommend using it. It's not needed, but it's definitely good practice because sometimes Roblox just doesn't want to load in things in time. So let's get send message. And from there, we can actually actually fire the remote. So if we def uh, reference our send message here, and then we can use fire server and then any information we want. Now what this is gonna do is this is gonna send a request to the server, the server is gonna process it and then most likely do something. We can also send information back from the server, which I'll explain in a second. But in this example, we're gonna be sending text. So let's send our input and the text in it, which is gonna be this here, our text. With that out of the way, that's gonna send our request to the server. Now let's actually process it, process it on the server. So let's take our two variables that we defined earlier, bring that to the server and actually process it. So let's do send message and then we're going to use on server event, connect function. And here is where a lot of people actually mess up. No matter what, when you send, when a client sends a request to the server, it's always going to give you the player as well. So you define your player and then we can get any perimeters after it, which will be our message. From here, we can just do print player and print our message and that'll work perfectly fine. So if we go to play here, write out any message you want, random letters that'll work, click send, it's gonna print out our player 
and the message we sent. Now, let's actually do something with that message as an example. Let's say we wanted to send a response back to the client. So let's say, let's do an if statement, if message equal equals hello server, then let's send a message back to the client by using the remote again, and then we can do fire client, and we can fire back hello client. And then on our client, we can actually process that. So we're gonna pretty much do the opposite of on server event. We're gonna do on client event, so send message on client event, connect function. And then we can actually get our response. Now you don't have to define player in this because it doesn't pass it through. And then from there, we can actually print out the response. So now if we test this example, if we spam our keyboard, it's gonna send nothing, but if we write hello server, exclamation point, actually have an error here. Ah, that's why I missed the player variable here because you actually have to define which player you're fi firing. So now if we do that, it should work. Nothing, and then if we do hello, Server exclamation point, it's going to return back hello client, and our client processes that. Now, this is not the best way to do so client to server and then server to client. We can actually use something called a remote function, which is what I'm going to get into now. So, I'm going to delete this example here and delete this example here and this and start fresh from here. I'm going to delete this remote and I'm going to use the remote function instead. Name this the same thing send message and now we can actually process it from here so let's say make a variable called local response and then we're going to file we're actually not going to file we're going to invoke server what it's going to do is pretty much the same thing as a firing the server like a remote function but uh we're actually going to get a response back in the same line so let's say we want to send our input again Input dot text, then our server will process this. What we can do is send message dot, uh, what was it? The on server event, or on server invoke equals function. That's going to give us our player and our message. And over up here, we can actually use return to send anything back we want. So let's say return, hello. And now on our client, if we print out the response, it will print it. So if we look here, wait a second, we click out hello, we'll spam our keyboard, click send, it's gonna return back hello instantly, which is really good. So that's a much better, uh, cleaner way of not having to use fire client, but there's definitely use cases when you're gonna be using both. Another thing I want to address is if you have a remote event, you can do send message and then you can do fire all clients. And this will trigger that on client event for every single player in the game. And with that out of the way, I hope this taught you a lot about remote events and remote functions.